Island Coast. Uh, I run a commercial contracting company, TKM Builders. Run it with my wife, Kate. Yeah, I've always had plate boats. Started off with a sports fish, which was pretty interesting. <laughs> and then I went to a bar crusher. Had that for a few years, that was good. And then a Bowden, actually a custom, custom plate. Then moved on to a Rebel, and now this. So this is a uh, Gen 3 hull, which is their latest hull, with the flared, flared bow. I actually went to their factory and I was sort of towards the end of the build and saw how it was all done. And the structure in the boat is next level. It's, yeah, it's built like a, like a tank. I think it's a Lloyd spec, something that they call it. And the, the flared bow, although it looks good, it, it actually adds a real purpose to the, to the handling of the boat, especially in a following sea. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. There's no spray, comes over the over the front. It's a very dry boat. And yeah, it serves its purpose pretty well. I don't know, mate, it's probably one for Alan to tell you, but I know he, he puts a lot of effort into it. It's all built on a jig, and I don't really understand how he gets it to do what he does, but yeah, it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of structure in there, behind there. A lot of force goes into getting it to where it's got to go, I think. And yeah, he's done really well to get to get the boat to where it is in an aluminium production. It's pretty impressive. He's uh, he was pretty pretty cigarette. He didn't like cameras in there, and which is fair enough. He's spent a lot of time researching and developing his his things. So hopefully it works well for him, and everyone catches on and enjoys as much as what I do. We get asked a lot how we do the flare, and. Uh... My standard answer is if I tell you, I have to make you some concrete gum boots. Hi, I'm Alan Shaw. I'm the owner of Makara Boats. We're a plate aluminium boat builder based in Northland, New Zealand. Uh, we believe Makara Boats builds the softest riding and strongest aluminium hulls in the world. So the Gen 3 hull is the accumulation of 10 years of R&D. We have always based our boats around Carolina Sportfisher hull shapes. For a long time we really wanted to do a flared hull and we just had to develop a method to do it which we've now done and you know that's the biggest feature of the Gen 3. The, the flared hull is a game changer for softness of ride. We've been able to um, get a finer entry without sacrificing following sea performance and uh, the dryness of ride is just night and day difference. That's the biggest change we've had in the Gen 3 hull. The second change we had was um, we did our hull structure around Lloyd Special Service Craft. That has also increased the strength of the hulls quite a lot. Uh, we already had what was pretty widely regarded as the strongest aluminium hulls in the market, um, but we're in the Gen 3, we've taken that to the next level. Always wanted to build or be involved in building a pretty nice plate boat. And I rang around Australia and most of them were telling me three to four year wait. And I just sort of started researching New Zealand boats because I heard they were pretty, pretty up there with their quality. And yeah, stumbled across my car and as soon as I saw the flared bow, I was pretty much hooked. And I just knew they'd, knew they'd go the way they do. And yeah, the eight mil plate, the way they're built, they're pretty, um, pretty awesome machines that I don't think you can really, really match in Australia at the moment. A couple of mates and myself flew over and went to his factory. It was pretty impressive setup. The way he's got it all running there, everything was sort of set up on a conveyor belt system, really clean. Different stages for each. Yeah, it's like a production line sort of setup. He's he's going to do well. Yeah, the after sale support's been really good. They, they don't just dump you and leave you, they bring up, find out how you're going, if you've got any questions. They gave me a few tips and there they've, they've worked out. Yeah, so a lot of people hop on this boat and they, they're they pretty surprised that it's not a fiberglass boat. It, the way it rides, the, the sound of it, you don't get that tinny sort of sound. The weight of it as well, because the eight mil plate, it rides as good as anything I've ever been in. And, bit different for a, a tinny, so they call them. So one of the key differences between a Makara boat hull structure wise and most of the other aluminium boats on the market is the thickness of our stringers and frames. One of the big things you'll find with an aluminium boat is that 
if your hull structure and your stringer thickness isn't thick enough, you'll get flexing between frames. And when aluminium flexes a lot over time, it's called cyclic loading. And then when you get cyclic loading, the hull structure will start to crack and let go. So you can see here, this is a 10 metre inboards engine room. Um, these are the engine bearers here. There's going to be a 16 mil plate there that we mount the engine to. Uh, but with, with an 8 mil stringer like this, uh, the maximum height you get before you don't actually increase your strength in an 8 mil stringer is 120 mil. So when we have a, a thinner stringer than that, we put a, a cap on it, or what this is called a rider bar. So the rider bar massively increases the strength of the frame. So um, if you see a hull with stringers that are 60 by 6 or 50 by 6, um, and the frame spacing is more than you know 600 mil or even at 600 mil, it won't meet um, the same standard as our hull. Um, structurally wise, you're talking you know two, three hundred percent stronger hull bottom and structure versus a 50 by six stringer on a six mil hull bottom. And we see hulls all the time where they come into the shop and between the frames there's not enough stringer thickness, and it, collapses so the hulls actually sink between frames and uh, long term they just crack and fall to bits. But yeah it's it's definitely very comfortable to to drive you feel very safe you don't have to worry about any bad habits all those nasty things boats can do you you don't ever feel like this is going to do it so very 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 comfortable straight away. Coming home yesterday from Fraser back over to Harvey Bay here and that little stretch of water is pretty Pretty renowned for being sloppy, especially the northeaster. And yeah, it was a following sea, and you didn't really cook much spray at all over the front. There was a few times there it did, but it's got to be expected a little bit. Generally, they're very, very dry. Twin 200 Yamahas, same thing. I've always, always had Yamahas. Never had any problems. And for every pro uses them, there's a reason why. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a recommendation for Malin. I'd, I'd obviously wanted the twins for the safety. We go a long way out, out off the reef and yeah, you always want two engines rather than one. And yeah, just the, with the Helm Master especially, the still works with one, but not, not to the same effect and extent with the tw twin engine setup. So the specs on this boat, eight meters long, obviously. The beam, I think it's 2.5 at the, obviously at the back. And as you lead up the front, it becomes more, I think it comes up to about 2.8. 480 litre fuel tank, 90 litres of water. I think it has an 18 degree dead rise at the rear, but a very fine entry. There's, there's structure in these things, as is, is, if you've seen it up there, it's pretty pretty unbelievable, the work that goes in underneath the floor. So up the bow, there's an electric anchor winch. Uh, the curved windscreen is a feature that's pretty, shouldn't be understated in it really. It's, it's looking through it, you don't, there's no, obstruction it actually looks like it's not there to be honest it gives you a very good line of view the electronics package is uh i tried to keep it no frills but the Fruno gear is pretty good it just takes a bit of getting used to and the zip wakes yes yeah he's fine tuning those still but oh, pretty much a must have i think on boats these days or some sort of system obviously the helm master that's a pretty impressive bit of gear that for docking fishing or oh, just general driving your boat. Pretty impressive how you can move your boat sideways, spot lock, obviously. The chair, I'm not sure what they're called, the shockwave seat base. They make it a lot more comfortable. So down there is a big hatch, that's got the water tank in, but there's enough room in there to, oh, I can put another esky in there. Obviously the fridge, toilet up the front. Oh, there's under your feet there, there's a, that lifts up, another storage for eskies, whatever. This folds down, you put a uh, bed bed here. Uh, there's a kill tank storage, live bait well obviously, and bait board you can take it out when, you, when you're game fishing. Tuna tubes and the shower just beside you, beside you there as well as a freshwater shower. They're not cheap boats, they're, you know, they're, they're at the top end of what you're paying for a, for a trailer boat. Bottom of the boat's constructed out of eight mil plate and when I went to his factory and saw a piece of eight mil aluminium, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> That's uh, it's a pretty thick piece of, piece of metal that you, you're riding on. I think that makes a big difference as well as the noise. There's no, 
there's no tin pinging like you can get with it. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth the 8 mil plate. As far as I'm aware, it's the only builder that's using 8 mil plate and it's, yeah, it would not be easy to, to work with, I suppose, but when you go to his factory and see the level of effort and work that he's, and money he's invested into, into building boats is, yeah, he's, you can understand why why they are what they are and he's pretty confident in his product and, he's, and he should be. If I had to describe this boat in five words, I'd, uh, this is gonna be a tough one. It's very sleek, I suppose, sporty, still tough, looks, looks pretty tough. Yeah, very safe. How many words am I up to there? <laughs> Extremely reliable. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be the last one we see in Australia. I think they're gonna do pretty well over here.